Hello everyone, welcome back. You're watching Empyrean Galactic Survival episode 179. I'm Anigmius and today it's time to unveil the Great Pumpkin. That's right, this is what's been hiding on the other side of the wall that we built a while ago. Just in time for Halloween, and when I say just in time for Halloween, I mean just in time for you to customize it in time for Halloween. It's basically uh, a pumpkin waiting for someone to carve it up into something crazy. You can make something spooky, something fun, something completely unrelated to faces. You can do pixel art. You can do whatever you want to do. This episode is going to give you a very brief tour of the Great Pumpkin so that you've got an idea of what it comes with. And then uh, I'm going to give you a, a few pointers, some tips, some things that make the carving of the face, so to speak, much, much easier with a lot less messing around and making mistakes and feeling frustrated because now you have to rebuild it the way it was but you can't remember. Don't need any of that. So we're going to spend a little bit of time on that as well. So first things first, it's very large. Um, there's a block. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's, it's not a small um, vessel. And the reason for having it large, first of all, is when your friends and such see it, it's, it's got that dramatic factor of being extremely large. But also, it makes it easier to put interesting things on the, uh, the face or all the way around or whatever you want to do. The larger it is, the more detail that you can fit and make it believable. Up top, we've got the little stem um, that pumpkins frequently have. Descent thrusters conveniently located around the stem so that they don't draw a lot of attention to themselves. Uh, we have... All of the thrusters necessary for movement. There's our reverse thrusters. There's the left side lateral thrusters or port side, depending on how you want to look at it. There is our forward thrusters. And there's the starboard side to the right side lateral thrusters, all down towards the bottom so that they don't draw uh, attention to themselves. And really, that's the end, end all be all of the external tour of this pumpkin. I put this little ridge in these flat areas uh, around the perimeter because pumpkins have those sort of ridges that come all the way around and this was a little bit too large and a little bit too flat but it's also got a bunch of automatically built ridges that just sort of came with the territory that were incorporated all the way around pretty much all the way around so it didn't I didn't want it to be a perfect pumpkin analog but I did want it to be recognizable and I thought that adding these ridges um, in key locations kind of helped that a little bit. Uh, down here, if you're looking for how to get into the ship, let me just get this out of my hand. We've got a little bit of a ramp here. And then if you climb up the ramp, there's a door directly above you with your jetpack. You come up inside and then you're inside this great big strange interior that's very dark because it's almost entirely flat black all the way around but it's got these floating lights with the high intensity red lights kind of working their way around here there's a red crimson spiral staircase that goes up around this cylindrical pole all the way up and around uh, this might be a little bit tricky for some of you <laughs> and then it comes to this um, platform that you can walk along and that brings you to the cockpit and the core, of course. Very simple and straightforward. I think I may add for the blueprint a warp tank right there on top of the core so that you can place the, the fuel that you need for the warp drive, which is up here. Um, you can see the underside of some of the thrusters. Use those as a convenient place to put some lights. If you kind of take a look from a difficult angle, you can see that these lights actually are following a pattern. They're sort of like on this elliptical um, arc all the way around. And then there's another larger elliptical arc around this way. And then in the middle is almost like a circle around like that with the light in the center. And then you've got the lights up there. You can add more lights. You can remove some of the lights. You can do whatever the hell you want, really. I mean, that's sort of the open invitation is that you have the opportunity to do that. Some areas here you can see, if we get up a little bit closer, I did sort of a glossy textured um, look to it with the same crimson red that's used in place of black. Basically everything that I've painted in here is either black or the same shade of crimson, um, kind of like the blood 
sort of effect and I made them glossy so that you'd get some of the reflection off of the lights just to make things a little bit more interesting. And I did this in an anticipation of uh, Alpha 7, which is going to be changing the way a lot of the textures are. Uh, I don't want to say represented. Um, the, there should be a more 3D aspect to them with the changes that are coming our way. So by using this texture instead of just the regular glossy texture that I might have normally used, will probably have a more pronounced effect and be even more interesting when we get to that point where everyone is on Alpha 7. So that's something to keep in mind. In terms of equipment, like I say, it's stripped down for the sake of just getting it so that it's a functional moving ship. We have generators and of course everything that's going on on this side is also going on on this side in equal measure. So we've got four generators, we've got fuel tanks here, lots of fuel tanks. In this uh, opaque area with the black and crimson is the RCS units. There's plenty of RCS units. We've got more thrusters here and I just built an enclosure, painted it all black because it seemed like a good idea at the time. Uh, thrusters here as well. These are sorry. Um, yeah, these are thrusters. These are the um, propulsion thrusters, the main propulsion thrusters. These are the lift thrusters right here in these enclosures. And of course, there's some over there as well. The reverse thrusters are right here. You could close them in if you wanted to. I chose in this case not to. And that's it. That's that's the whole thing. So you, you might notice there's no storage whatsoever except for the fuel tanks. That means no oxygen, no general storage, no ammunition storage. There's not a single gun mounted anywhere on the ship. Um, there is obviously no drills, so there's no um, uh, harvesting storage. It's basically stripped down for the very basics of movement. And before I forget, I should point out um, for the size that it is, it is really maneuverable. Like you can spin, you can dive, you can do pretty much whatever you want. In terms of actual movement, uh, it's sort of up there with the top speed for capital vessels in atmosphere, I guess 31.9 meters per second, uh, and it accelerates very, very well. So that's something to keep in mind as well, is that um, unless you add substantially to the mass of the ship, you can expect this to be um, surprisingly maneuverable. Uh, and again, if you're playing on a server, that could be even more terrifying when you just kind of spin around and there's this great big pumpkin -y face doing whatever you've decided that pumpkin-y pumpkin face should do. So that's the interior. We've seen the exterior. And now we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at how to do um, whatever you want to do on the front, but a little bit easier than just if you were to start painting or cutting through everything and trying to make it work the first time around. The easiest way I think to describe this process is if you were to make a real jack-o-lantern on a real pumpkin, one of the things you would probably do first would be to go around and draw the design that you want to transfer into the, the pumpkin permanently. It's much easier to go around and change something that you drew on, especially with a pencil placed very lightly than it is to start carving into the pumpkin and realize you don't like it and try and grow the pumpkin back <laughs> so you can start over. It doesn't work so well. So that's the exact same principle behind what we're doing here is we're using just plain cubes, very simple, very straightforward, quick to place, quick to remove. Don't have to worry about selecting any more sophisticated or intricate shapes. We're just getting sort of the general design in place. Place it on the front of the ship. Even if it doesn't look like it'll it'll fit there, it will. And then once you've gone around and you've decided that you've just you've created the design that you're happy with, then it's a very simple, straightforward process, just like we've begun here. Remove one of the blocks that you used to create the design, and then remove one of the blocks from the hull immediately behind it. You just go around the outside of anything that you've got with cubes, and you'll be transferring that design very literally onto the hull of the ship. So it's very simple, very straightforward. Uh, and I'm glad that it's very simple and straightforward because it makes this whole process much more approachable. It's easy to set up the design and it's easy to transfer that design to the hull. And it doesn't take long. If you're gonna spend a lot of time on anything, I would rather it be in the design process and coming up with something that you're happy with than some sort of really involved 
not necessarily a very fun process of transferring it onto the hull. Another thing that I did to save a little bit of time is I put a secondary wall in behind the main hull on the front. So that's something to keep in mind if you're putting things on the side or the back or top or bottom, wherever you want things on your pumpkin to be carved out. The secondary wall is only on the front. You'll have to add it in the other areas that you're using. But the purpose for that secondary wall is that once you've got the features carved out of the, the hull, you can paint and texture that secondary wall in behind to control how the face looks, particularly when it's lit. One of the things that to me is the most appealing about something like this is having a really intense sort of glowing background behind the design, whatever the design is, in this case it's a face, that's what makes it Halloween as opposed to just a pumpkin that gets really, really boring when the lights go out. <laughs> We don't want things to go really, really boring once the lights go out. We want them to be even more entertaining because it's Halloween. It didn't take long, you can see, carving through things, getting things set up. A little bit of additional changes to the eyebrows, and then we'll transfer those. One of the things that I've noticed is that if you're trying to create a theme or trying to create uh, a mood for your pumpkin, the easiest way to do that is with eyebrows and the shape of the top of the eye as opposed to trying to do it with the mouth. So I've created sort of an angry, mischievous looking pumpkin with the eyebrows sloping down and the top of the eye follows that same sort of contour. And the face is a great big smiley face, but you'll see when it's all done and lit up, it doesn't look like a great big smiley, happy, welcoming pumpkin. It looks like this mischievous sort of borderline satanic demonic creature living inside the pumpkin and making his face stick out just a tip if you're if you're trying to create a mood or if you're trying to create a look for your pumpkin is to spend a little bit of time looking at what you're doing with the top of the eyes and the eyebrows and that can be a, a really useful tool for making things look the way that you want them to without necessarily knowing specifically why that's sort of a big one what you're seeing here is something you can do or not do if you're fine with leaving things kind of blocky and voxel looking on your face. There's no reason why you can't leave them that way. I wanted to try and see if I could smooth things off a little bit, make them look uh, a little bit more refined. But one of the challenges, especially when we've got this surface that we're working on, that's essentially got a kind of a soft curve over the whole thing, is that things don't line up and things don't necessarily come together the way that we would like them to. So it's kind of a trade-off. You can get things looking more smooth and more refined, but the downside is that if you look at them from certain angles, they're going to look worse than if you had just left them with the blocks. Just something to keep in mind. So you can see we added those blocks in order to smooth things off, and then we just go around and texture them using the smooth metal texture, same as we used all around the exterior of the hull, and the darkest orange color that's available. That's the one that I used for the hull. So if you want to match it, that's the one that you would want to use. Go around to kind of get everything sort of um, retouched so that everything matches again. And now we've got this secondary wall in behind. Like I say, you can use whatever texture and what color, whatever color you want. In this case, I'm using the gloss metal texture because you can see just by the light on my suit reflecting off of it, it takes the point, the source of light and diffuses it so that it's softer and reflects it in such a way that you can get more glowing sort of um, feel out of it than just a, a light shining off of something very important when we're looking at trying to make something um, appear as though it's glowing from the inside but not having the option to do that specifically with individual blocks that glow for example so we start off by setting up this wall the way that we want it to look. Very key, um, important detail. Make sure that you're not set to texture and paint the entire block when you do this, because if you do, it's gonna reflect on the other side. I, I guess I shouldn't say reflect in this particular circumstance. It's going to change the other side of the wall, which will be visible from inside the ship. So you wanna make sure that you're just working on one sort of face for both the texture and the paint. And now it's just a matter of putting the lights and you can see we're basically putting them on the back side of the hull blocks so that the lights shine directly into that secondary wall that we painted the slightly lighter shade of orange. We're changing the lights, uh, the color to an orange color 
and then we're increasing the intensity and the range to their maximum values. If you haven't noticed already, one thing with the lights is that once you place a light and you change its color, and sometimes I've noticed uh, it works also with the range and the intensity, but always with the color, the next bulb that you place on that ship until you log out or change it will be that color. So if you place one bulb and you have changes to make, make those changes before you place the rest of the bulbs because it'll save you a little bit of time having to set things up a little bit differently. So I decided that once I got things lit that I wanted to try and smooth things out just a little bit more, get them looking a little bit more um, refined as best I could, filled in, not quite so janky. And what we ended up with is the glowing pumpkin face. So. The, the basic pumpkin without any carving done to it will be available as the Great Pumpkin Blank in the workshop uh, and linked uh, below as well. And this specific phase will be available as a uh, different blueprint, the Great Pumpkin Demo, that you can also get. There's a link down below as well. Just to keep in mind, you can use it the way it is. You can modify it. You can do whatever you want. See, we've got some pointy teeth and now it looks a little bit more evil than it did before. And if we change it to nighttime, very intense glow. Maybe even too much in some spots, but <laughs> I'm not complaining. You get the idea. Have fun, mess around with it, do your thing. I tried to give you as much time before Halloween as possible so that you can make it the way that you want it. The next build is going to be another big one. Um, I'm not going to give out uh, any details right now. You'll have to come back for the next episode to see it, but I think you'll like it. Uh, so if you want to be notified about the next and future videos in this and other series, the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Links for social media in the information section below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.